other people, wow. right? And they don't hear what I say. So here, here's what happened. Um, obviously, so prior to me in Bellator, Hector and Eddie were the ones that left, right? They were Hector was Hector the, Lombard and yep, Eddie Alvarez, Eddie Alvarez were the, the UFC, both of them. Both the middleweight champ and then the lightweight champ, and they both got taken care of pretty well. But if you if you remember Eddie's situation, I don't know if you remember this, he got an offer from the UFC, still under the matching period with Bellator. Bellator says we matched it, right? And in terms of what was in the contract, it was matched, right? But because Bellator has no pay-per-view venue, well, if UFC says we'll pay you on pay-per-view, and Bellator says, well, we will too. But that's not real life, right? Right. That, that's they fictitious. Don't have, they've done two pay per view shows ever. And they've never met any type of threshold. So, yeah. you know, they say it matches, but it doesn't say, I don't know if you remember, but they went to court over it. And the UFC won. Eddie had, got the right to, I'm sorry, he didn't win. He, he somehow did like a one more fight in Bellator and then went to the UFC. I don't know exactly what the finality of that case was. But, anyways, when that happened, his, his contract became public knowledge. Right, and so a lot of UFC fighters were pissed because he they gave him a whole bunch of money, and so when I I, I was twelve and zero, I had my last fight in Bellator against Andre Kreshkov, July thirtieth, maybe thirty first of uh, twenty thirteen, beat him up pretty good, and then I had a twelve month matching period, and so what was expressed to me by the UFC brass was that you need to get rid of your matching clause, and we will make you an offer, but we will not make you an offer until that happens. Get rid of your matching clause. Yes. How do you do that? Well, here, here's how I went about doing it. Because <laughs> it's 12 months, right? That's a right. freaking, I'm not going to sell for 12 months. Right. So I'd call Bjorn every three days and say, hey, Bjorn, I'm not going to resign. Please Bjorn let me. Bjorn is the guy who was running Bellator at Correct, the time. yeah. And now he, you know, he got fired. Yeah. But, um, and Bjorn had a terrible reputation, but I never, I had a decent relationship with him. I never, like, butted heads too bad. So every three days I said, Bjorn. Let me go. I'm not coming back. And then so everyone says, well, Bellator didn't want to resign me. Well, that's, that's not true at all. Every day it's Bjorn, let me go. Bjorn, let me go. Because, you know, I love challenges. What, what I love more than anything in the world is to challenge myself. If you look at my wrestling career, that, that's what it's all about, taking the next best thing every single time. And so, yeah, so finally in and all this time, you know, Dana in the UFC is saying, we want Ben Askren, we want Ben Askren. I'm ranked number seven in the world or, what, you know, somewhere around there, 12 and 0. And so I remember I was going to the Asian food store because I was going to make some tonka soup. And Bjorn calls me and said, you're released. Full, full, you're released. You can go. And I say I appreciate that. So Friday morning, it was Thursday night. Friday morning, it's in November sometime, maybe mid-November. Um, morning, they fax over the release. My management faxes it to UFC headquarters. And all of a sudden that afternoon, there's a you know, like a little scrum where everyone's asking Dana questions. And then Dana says, we're not interested in Ben Askren. And I said, wait, what just happened there? Right? Because for the last three months, they were saying, we were interested, we're interested, we're interested, we're interested. Now I finally produced this full release from Bellator that I got, and now they're not interested. And so I said, wow, I just got caught in the middle of this. And uh, So was there a reason given? Well, so, okay, so then Monday, so then I say, F that. I'm buying my, so I bought a plane ticket to, to Vegas for Monday. So that was Friday that happens. I said, fuck that. I'm going to Vegas. I'm not taking this shit, you know? So uh, Monday, I buy my plane ticket to Vegas. I fly out to Vegas to UFC headquarters. Uh, I met with Lorenzo. Dana was on the little speakerphone dealy. And they offered me uh, a Zufa contract, but it would be confidential. And I would have to fight one fight for the World Series of Fighting, which is like, well, that's bizarre. What? Yeah. And they say, One fight for the World Series of ex- Fighting. What exactly. was your relationship with the World Series of Fighting? The World Series I don't, of Fighting I don't was know. like a feeder organization at that time. Something, yeah. I mean, in a, I, in I a don't, way. Yeah. And it, Marlon Marais, Justin Gagey, both those guys yeah. came from champs over there to yeah. the UFC. I think the relationship was, is very hazy between the old World Series of Fighting and the UFC because there was also people that went the other way, right? Andre Alarovsky gets dropped from the UFC, goes to World Series, Anthony Johnson, mm-hmm. boom, all these people. Yeah. So they say, one fight, one fight. World Series of Fighting, we will pay, Zufa will pay you, but you do one fight. Okay. I say, well, that's effed up, but okay. I said, I don't think anyone's going to go for it, but I'll do it. So I leave, and uh, about six hours later, I got a phone call that says that deal is no longer available. We are not going to make you an offer. Yeah. So, wow. And you have no idea why. Well, I, I, so I, here's my guess. I've never got to sit face-to-face with Dana and say, 